was over here, so the wind was still taking it. I just got to see what the last words of this one are. Sometimes I'm like, oh, there's a hole, and then I don't remember what it meant. Yeah. Good morning. Please stand and welcome our celebrant, Father Osmar. Waters. 
years of rebirth we have put on Christ Jesus come oh come come to the river flowing from the body of Christ will go down deep in the water but in the Lord we shall arise In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us glorify our Lord together. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. We remember in this Mass, the soul of Charles Almenno. We pray for Virginia Lewis, who is preparing for a surgery, and for all those who are in need of healing, so the Lord may truly be with them and strengthen them. Let us pray. God of justice, Father of truth, you guide creation in wisdom and in goodness to fulfillment in Christ your Son. Open our hearts to the truth of his gospel that your peace may rule in our hearts and your justice guide our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior he is, meek and riding on an ass, on a coal, 
the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephron and the horse from Jerusalem. A warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O my God and King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever. and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever. Give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King. is faithful to all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever. I can A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 
The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, uh, Jesus exclaimed, uh, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of our Lord. Good morning, everyone. Well, today, as we are celebrating Independence Weekend, this great country, and we thank God for the many blessings that he gives us and for freedom and liberty here. We are confronted with this gospel passage from St. Matthew, where we just heard Jesus say to us, come to me, all you who labor are burdened, and I will give you rest. You know that nowadays, after months of this pandemic, I don't know anyone who doesn't fit the figurative description or the need of rest. My gosh, you know, we priests here, uh, some people might think that we are resting more nowadays and we attending so many people who are distressed and distraught by the consequences of this pandemic who are showing need of rest and comfort. For once, uh, even in my own uh, life, uh, everything has changed so much. So that one sentence from this gospel has become a kind of a mantra for me personally. These last few weeks, since many things are more stressful 
and more challenging than ever in my ministry as a priest and as a pastor, and also as part of my own blood family. In fact, you know that this week, two days ago, my aunt passed away of uh, COVID-19 back home, and the family was not even able to bury her. The police did it for them. They were just observing from a distance from the cars. They were telling me that that's the most devastating experience they have ever had. And now my own sister is fighting also the virus. And uh, my niece, who is an administrator in this hospital, is feeling so guilty because she feels that she brought the virus home from the hospital. And she is also experiencing the, the virus herself. So there are so many things that are going on in my own family as well. And then so I was thinking, I can only imagine what other families and individuals are going through all over the country and all over the world. So do we fit the category Jesus talks about today? Just line up and wait for our turn? It may feel that way, that the waiting line is interminable, slow moving and never ending. People are so tired already, so in need of peace and rest. Jesus' inbox or request line or ticket distribution center, however, finds each of us first in line and give us an automatic and instant reply that says, right now is your time. Jesus' arms are already wide open and the instructions are already there for us. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. Oh, oh, our turn. In that invitation, the emphasis is on learning from Jesus how to be meek and humble of heart. And boy, that was, we are so in need of being meek and humble of heart. We are so divided. We are so having difficulties all over the place. Because it looks like humility is way apart from us. And we're not even considering that as disciples of Christ, we must be humble first. And we're supposed to learn by taking Jesus' yoke upon ourselves. That yoke begins with finding the time uh, to sit with Jesus a bed in prayer and really learn from him. What Jesus teaches is applicable to all of us, each of us, in our own unique situation. In these times, whatever our situation is, that teaching includes Jesus' reminder to trust in the Lord, in the Lord's care for us first. Sometimes we forget that we as followers of Christ, as people of God, we must realize that we are loved by him first. Everything has to begin from there. Everything he did for us is out of love. So he has loved us first. If we don't feel loved first, everything can break apart. And what that means is that we must then act according to God's ways and not for personal gain and really care for one another. We are called by Jesus to take up his yoke on our shoulders and thus continue the work of caring for those around us, starting right there in our own homes, 
offering support to so many weary, weary people worn out under the unbearable weight of neglect and indifference. And what a difference, a difference would that make? What a different world will this, will this be if we were to follow what Jesus is inviting us to do? You know, I've been thinking in my prayer also reflecting, how are we supposed to do what Jesus asks of us when we ourselves may not feel all that strong? It helps to picture a yoke, a harness shared by two oxen, which allows them to work together as a team. We're not supposed to do anything on our own. We're supposed to work together as a team, as a church. Followers of Jesus should never work alone. We're supposed to be together and work together. So Jesus is not handing over a burden to us. He's just asking us to join him in his work to share the yoke and make an enduring difference in our lives, in our family, and in this world. Suddenly, in this vein, humility seems like something we must want to do. Our world and maybe our lives seem so heavy and heart-wrenching right now. We are called to a meekness that allowed us to ask our loving God for help, to learn from Jesus how to make our way through it in small and humble steps of service of others. That is where we will finally find peace. We beg for a humility that can place us in the shoes of other, of other people to see and begin to understand their world and point of view. And I beg myself for a humility that make us docile and obedient in the body of Christ so we can work together in the church, united as one family, rather than separating ourselves because of our own personal interests. We are not in this alone. But side by side with Jesus doing our part, but knowing that we are guided and loved by his great heart first. So we place ourselves today in the care of Jesus and allow him to touch our hearts and illumine our minds today in a new way. And let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord comes to proclaim peace to every nation. Meek and humble of heart, his rule extends from sea to sea. Seeking to reveal God's will and the manifestation of his kingdom, we pray this morning. For the church that we may entrust our futures and ourselves to God's love and give witness to the reign of God in our lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. On this independent weekend, we pray for our nation. May we live the Christian ideals on which it was founded and remember our dependence on God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all cities burdened by violence and destruction, that God's compassionate care will inspire people to work for the restoration of neighborhoods and communities and restore hope to all who are struggling against crime and poverty. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who long for freedom, for the addicted, for those who are forced into prostitution, and for those entrapped by poverty or illiteracy, that God will open a new path for them and enable them to live in the freedom of the children of God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For lay leaders who have assumed leadership of the church's ministries in pastoral service, education, health care, or social service, that the Spirit will guide them in continuing the work of Jesus in making known the reign of God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom that we may recognize the personal, communal, and social wolves that distract us from following Christ and be open to God's grace to strengthen and inspire us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in this community and for those that have already died, that they may know eternal light, rest, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wisdom and compassion, your kingdom is one of justice and peace, where all creation is reconciled in your love. May this world come to revere your awesome presence, and may your church never cease to lighten heavy burdens from those in distress, through Christ our Lord. The table of our Lord is ready. Let us now pray together that this our offering may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all, all the church. Father, who have molded into one our nation, drawn from the peoples of many lands, grant that as the grains of wheat become one bread, and the many grapes one cup of wine, so we may, we may before all others be instruments of your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Your Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just our death and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He spoke to us a message of peace and taught us to live as brothers and sisters. His message took form in the vision of our founding fathers as they fashioned uh, a nation where we might live as one. His message lives on in our midst as our task for today and a promise for tomorrow. And so with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest. You are indeed uh, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them, uh, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered uh, willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples uh, saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. And let us now together proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the whole world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, and Joseph Tyson our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. Today, we commend Charles Almel and all our benefactors, family members, and parishioners, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints 
who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord be with you, your and let us share it with one another with a sign. Behold uh, the Lamb of God. Behold uh, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are welcome to this meal. Lord, I am not worthy to enter my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. We will be bringing communion to you at this moment. So they will pass right now so you can clean your, your hands before you receive.
let us love one another as we share the true living bread. Jesus is our God and our brother. With his flesh and blood, we are fed. born of God. Jesus is our life. God is love. We who break this bread are one body. We who share this cup are all one. Children of our Father in heaven, we are heirs with God's only Son. Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus is our life, God is love. is the vine, we the branches, we are grains of wheat, Christ the bread. Those who eat this bread live forever, one with Christ our Lord and our head. Everyone is our life. God is
I invite all of you in your homes to join me in the act of spiritual communion so the Lord may nourish you and strengthen you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you now within me and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, O oh God. Amen. Let us pray. By showing us in this Eucharist, O Lord, a glimpse of the unity and joy of your people in heaven, deepen our unity and intensify our joy that all who believe in you may work together to build the city of lasting peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. I uh, have an announcement. Um, last week, we had a survey going. We wanted to know what uh, you were thinking or were preferring in terms of our services. There have been questions about moving into the building. And uh, after, uh, I want to thank all of you who responded. Uh, we did have a pretty good uh, response. Eighty-five percent of all those re that responded wants to stay outside in outdoor masses, and about fifteen percent wants to move in. Um, as you, we have been praying about this, trying to discern what's the best way to serve you. For us, we want to serve you as best as we can. Your health is important to us. We don't want anything bad to happen to you. But we want to also accommodate you as much as we can. So we've been praying, trying to come up with a compromise here. And so we have decided we're going to try out different things. And I, ahead of time, want to thank you for your patience, really, and the way that you will adapt to these changes. And we're just trying things out here and see how we can better serve you there. So the compromise here will be that all the two, the two masses on uh, Saturday will be inside, and uh, that will give us time to clean up the church also and everything. And then all the services on Sunday will be out outdoor uh, services uh, with a change. The 7.30 Mass that we have been celebrating outside will move earlier to 7 o'clock in the morning. And this Mass at 9 will move to 8.30 in the morning so that we can accommodate the 11 o'clock Mass and move it back to 10 o'clock because uh, you can already feel in the heat right now and we're going to give them a little break also on the Spanish side. So that's the way it's going to go. Uh, it is hard to accommodate everybody and please everyone and please be be patient with us and uh, we thank you for your understanding too. So that's the way that we're going to try. Later on we want to see if we can add maybe a mass at 7 p.m. on Sunday since it's very cool and nice in the evening. It might be a bilingual mass to accommodate those who wouldn't, and don't have a chance to come early in the morning. So but that's, wh that's where we are right now. And I thank you for your understanding. Hopefully, this will be something that you will welcome. I also want to thank uh, all the people who helped us with our adoration on Friday. Johnny, you, you too, especially you with the music. It was just a very beautiful time for us 
to be here. A lot of people came and all those who came or were following us in the internet and the Facebook uh, and FaceTime there, they all had a wonderful time, a holy time. I hope they, that many of you will join us next time that we have it here. Um, the Lord be with you. May our loving God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let us go to serve God in one another. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, everyone. Thank you, Keep Father. safe. God will